so excited to start this project with you guys because this project is the first time that I am doing a bead along. What is a bead along? Well, in knitting, they do these things called knit alongs. So it just means that a bunch of people are all working on the same project at the same time and they are sharing the excitement of watching it grow and and putting the colors together and seeing how it all comes out. And it's just fun to do it in a group setting as opposed to just by yourself. Now, it's hard to do that when there's 100,000 of you guys out there, but luckily we have social media. So in face on Facebook, I have got five different beading groups participating in our bead along. And so this, the, yeah, any one of those groups is a great place to go and share your pictures, ask your questions, um, look at other people's pictures of the projects that they're working on. That's the whole point of doing a bead along. And it's the main event is gonna be happening the entire month of March in these five groups. The truth of the matter is, I think it never ends. So in the Jill Wiseman Designs Beaters group, which is my personal group, um, we're always gonna be talking about this carrier bead project and about different patterns and designs and that kind of thing. Um, I don't see an end date to this happening, okay? So if you're not participating right off the bat, don't worry. We still wanna see what you're working on. Come join us in the groups. What I'm gonna do, because there are five of them, I'm going to put uh, links to all of those groups down in the video description. So what you'll have to do is click the little down arrow to open up that video description area and I will put links to all of those. I'll put links to the sets of instructions. There, there are gonna be multiple sets of instructions for the these carrier bead uh, designs and so I'll put links to those they are free PDF downloads on my website and I will put links to the kits that are available for this project now having said that if you're watching this as this video is being released the project is this gorgeous necklace or there's a bracelet version that you can make and the main bead for this is called the carrier bead and it's in short supply in the u.s right now at least the check glass version of this carrier bead so i may be sold out of kits uh, over the next couple of weeks i am actually releasing another 150 kits on march 1st 2018 the day that i'm launching this video so that uh, people who are seeing this on video for the first time you'll have an ability to get kits but once those 150 are sold out and i anticipate that they will get sold out within a couple of days um, it may be three to five weeks before i get my hands on more of these carrier beads to make more of these kits. So I don't want you to freak out. Uh, they're coming, they're, if I'm lucky, they're gonna come sooner than that three to five weeks. And the minute I have them available, I'm gonna have them up on the website for you to, to be able to purchase. You can either purchase it in kit form or you can just buy purchase the carrier beads if you want and use your own delicas and your own colors and your own supplies for finishing off the project, okay? So that's kind of all the administrative stuff but let's talk about the project because the project is so cool and there's a little bit of history here so what happened was um i would say about four or five months ago i noticed some people posting on facebook about projects like this like the necklace that i'm wearing um, using something called a carrier bead and it was pl a plastic bead from china now i'm a bit of a bead snob and so number one i'm not really in love with plastic beads and number two i'm not really in love with chinese beads uh, the quality tends to be questionable and um so i wasn't too interested but then i started seeing some of the gorgeous projects that were coming out of them and i thought huh i wonder if there is the opportunity to get the czech republic to create a glass version of this plastic bead because then i'd be a lot more interested so i went and talked with one of my buddies at the beadsmith company 
and Perry Brookstein is an absolute treasure trove of knowledge about the Czech bead industry. Um, not only has he been in the business his entire life, his father was in the bead business importing beads from the Czech Republic his entire life. So Perry has literally grown up in a bead store. Uh, so I went to ask Perry and I said, you know, there's this Chinese carrier bead and I sent him a picture and I said, do you think it would be possible to get something like that made in the Czech Republic? And he said, are you kidding me? It's, it already exists. It, it, it was the carrier beads they called back then a pillow bead. It's a two hole bead, kind of pillow shaped. And that was the original name for it was a pillow bead. And it's been around from the Czech Republic for decades. And so as a result of me kind of bringing this to Beadsmith's attention, this kind of craze as more and more people started using these Chinese plastic ones, Beadsmith uh, rejuvenated the pillow bead, which we're now calling carrier beads, and ordered some from the Czech Republic. Takes six to eight weeks to get those beads into the US, so they finally arrived in the US, and I got my hands on some samples, and I love them. First of all, there's a lot of difference between the Chinese and the, and the um, Czech Republic versions. Uh, the plastic versions, well, they're plastic. Uh, they are transparent generally, except I think I've seen some jet that were opaque. Um, so basically you have to cover the entire bead because the bead itself is not very pretty. With the glass versions, they're opaque and they are pretty in and of themselves. I've had quite a few people say, well, I don't even want to cover it with the peyote strip because the bead is pretty. You don't have to. You can use them as is, or you can incorporate some of the uncovered ones in your project with some of the ones that you've got covered. The glass has a nice, nice weight to it. Um, it just makes it feel substantial and rich. Some people were worried that it would be feel heavy. Honestly, I am really kind of, I hate having heavy things around my neck. I've been wearing this necklace for hours now and I don't even notice it's there. It's completely comfortable. So don't worry about the weight of the glass beads. They're not that much heavier than say a six or an eight millimeter bead. I mean, people will put that in a project with not, and not think twice. So. Uh, I think that just comes from not having seen it or felt it themselves. Let me bring you into the hand cam and I want to show you the difference between the Czech and the Japan, um, the Czech and the Chinese beads up close. So here are the two beads. So here's our the original, um, I'm sorry, well actually the Czech bead was the original, right? I actually had somebody ask me, well aren't you concerned that the Czech are now ripping off the Chinese. And I'm like, no, actually the Czech were there first. The, Czech, Jap, uh, the Chinese ripped off the Czech bead. Now the Czech bead is just coming back into production because it's trendy again. Um, so you'll notice that this one has a slightly wonky end, but it doesn't make a difference when you cover it with a uh, peyote strip. The Czech bead is just a little bit like just maybe a millimeter or two shorter than the Chinese bead is. However, if you look at the profile here, let me show you here, the Czech bead, well, and it, it's interesting, this one's actually showing up as a little bit bigger. I, I compared to a, a, a different um, one of the plastic ones, and the Czech one was a little bit thicker than the uh, Chinese one. So there may be some variation um, in that thickness in one or both of the iterations. But they're basically the same thing. L one important distinction here though to note as I'm showing you these, why am I showing you with black? Let me show you with white. Maybe you see it better a little bit. Um, notice the hole size here. So the holes on the uh, Chinese one are very, very big. So if you wanted, when you go to attach the beads together, um, like this, if you wanted to just use a seed bead in between the carrier beads, it's going to get swallowed by these big holes in the Chinese version, the Chinese plastic version. The Czech version 
has a much smaller diameter hole and you can easily use a size 11 seed bead in between the carrier beads with no problem. One of the reasons that that can be important or interesting is that you can use, instead of using, here I used six millimeter round beads in between the carrier beads, you could use a little section of beaded tube right here. Carol Dean Sharp is the woman who gave me that idea. She did one where she used little sections of cubic right angle weave tube right in between here looked completely gorgeous okay so that's why i mentioned that is that you know the the whole size there can make a big difference in how you connect these together okay so the question is so what the heck do you do with these you keep talking about these peyote strips and covering them well this is what i'm talking about let me kind of move these out of the way these are all little peyote strips they all started out like this it's a little flat piece of peyote that you're going to create. Uh, you can do it with even count peyote or with odd count. This one happens to be even count. That means when you start, start out, you pick up six delicas and then you do 48 rows total. And when you do that, it is going to fold right over the carrier bead and you're going to zip it up right up on the top here and it's gonna completely cover that carrier bead on the top and bottom edges. This, the same set of beads, six wide, 48 long, will also work on the Chinese plastic ones. So if you have or prefer the plastic ones, the same set of instructions will work on the plastic ones. It's gonna be a slightly tighter fit, you're gonna to have to to pull a little bit harder when you do the zigzag join up here, but it does fit that same 48 rows fits, okay? Um, I have seen some people do instructions where they use 50 rows instead of 48 rows. 50 rows for me would have been, was like way too much. There was one bead, and at this point I've forgotten which one it is, uh, I'm not sure that I even have it with me today. I did do one bead at 50 rows and it kind of bowed out here up at the top. 50 rows was too much for me. 48 is perfect. So we've got all of these different patterns that you can make and you can use three colors, you can use two colors, you can do all, a bunch of single colors if you want. I mean, there's just so many options. Um, I'm gonna take my necklace off so that I can show you close up all of the patterns that I did in this necklace. Let me kind of move these out of the way. So here is, I, I decided the very first piece that I made, I just wanted to do all two, with just the two colors, super classic black and white. And it's so much fun to intersperse all of these different color patterns together. And you can see where some of them I did like reverse same pattern but just with beads in reverse spots so one example is here where white is the main dominant color here we've got the black is the main dominant color um let's see where else do i have matches um here's some more matches here i did the white as the pop on the inside and on the outside here i did black as the pop on the inside and outside. So it's kind of fun to play with that reverse kind of thing. Um, and then, so this happens to be one of the kits that I'm doing, that I'm offering. And, oh, here we go. So the actual kit also includes this turquoise color. So the kit is black, white, and turquoise. I chose to make this particular necklace all black and white, but you could make it black, white, and turquoise by incorporating a lot of the three color patterns. And then, as if that weren't enough options, let me show you this. This, of course, is my six beads across, even count peyote strip. Here, I did seven beads across, which makes it an odd count peyote strip. And yes, that means you have to do the funky odd count turn, but the benefit of doing an odd count piece is that it gives you a center. And that means it gives, opens up a huge number of design options for what you can do on this little peyote strip. 
and you can have these a ton of gorgeous centered designs. So here I've got that herringbone kind of V going on here or that chevron and I would not have been able to do that centered on the peyote strip if I'd had six beads. I needed that bead number seven down the center to, cen to center the pattern. So, so <laughs> there's just so much to tell you guys. I just can't even stand it. When I was trying to explain why this video was going to be so hard, and it's because there's so many options. Um, so what this bead along is going to include in, in, in the case of instructions is I've got a set of patterns um, for even count two color, two colors in a, in a bead, like my black and white necklace here. I've got a set of patterns that are even count three colors in a bead. Uh, I will have a, a selection, not probably as big, of, of even count four color uh, bead patterns. And then the same thing with two color, three color, four color in the odd count version. I know, it's like a whole bunch of patterns, but it gives you so many options. And you can pick the ones that you like the best, or you can make tons and tons of them and just go nuts, which is really kind of what I'm planning on doing because they're really fun to do. It's very satisfying to make something bead weaving this small and then come up with something that's interesting. Um, where I have created this necklace, and let me kind of show you the back of this necklace. You're, when you get the kits from me, they include 15 of these carrier beads. You could, if you want, continue these carrier beads all the way to the back of your necklace. Um, to me, that's not really showing a lot there at the back, and so I would prefer to just use uh, less expensive and less work intensive beads at the back. I really liked the way this bib kind of thing looked at the, at the beginning uh, or at the front of my neck. Um, and then 15 of these carrier beads is also enough to make a bracelet. Now I haven't had time to even, I'm, I've been so busy designing all these beaded beads or these bead patterns that I didn't have time to cover these ones, but I wanted to show you that this makes a beautiful bracelet also. So imagine all of these covered with pa different pattern of, uh, of peyote strips. And where I use six millimeter drucks here in between, you could use the four millimeter in between if you wanted. You could use just seed beads in between here if you wanted. Um, you've got all sorts of options for what you put in between the carrier beads themselves. This particular bracelet I did on Stretch Magic. So it is a stretchy be uh, bracelet with no clasp for it. And I wanted to show you this one is 14 of the carrier beads with the six millimeter drux, and it fits my large wrist. Uh, I have my wrist measures about eight inches, so this 14 of them works up to eight inches. You can see here if you add that 15th one in plus a set of beads in between them, that's going to add a, another half inch or so to the to the measurement. So without making any further adjustments, that will fit an eight and a half inch wrist. And because it's stretch magic, it will stretch over your wrist. You can also make this with a clasp and I will cover that two you will need fewer of the carrier beads if you use a clasp because your clasp will take up part of that area um, the clasp is also included in your kits so with your bracelet kit you have the uh, i have include both the stretch magic and the materials to create to do a strong um, bracelet with a clasp so you can choose which way to finish it off with the necklace I include the 15 carrier beads. You've got a bazillion free patterns. You've got enough delicas in three to five colors to make tons more of these carrier beads than or peyote strips than just these. It includes all of the beads here for the back side of your necklace. You can make it up to about a 28 inch necklace. Um, and then it also includes the closure, the clasp closure, which is my 
beautiful new, oops, am I putting this on properly? No, I'm putting it on backwards. How am I, there we go. I am trying to do it right, I just, I'm dazzled by the lights. There we go. This is my new vertical hole tube clasp clasps because the holes instead on the tube clasp instead of laying flat and horizontal are vertical. So it makes uh, for a more seamless ending here at the end when especially when you're attaching it to bead weaving. Okay, so that's kind of the overview of the, all of this. Let me tell you a couple things. This is as far back as I have managed to trace back the origins of the idea of putting the peyote strips on the carrier beads. This is actually, I, and I say I trace back, I didn't really do it. My friend um, Susan Sassoon uh, is the one who gave me this information. Miroslava Felguth is the first one that I can find who did the peyote strips on these carrier beads. So I would just love to give her credit for coming up with that idea because it's turned into a great craze uh, in the beading groups um, all over Pinterest and all over Facebook. And I just, I absolutely love this. It's so much fun. And I just wanted to make sure that she got proper credit for that. Let me also then show you what your free pattern is gonna look like. And the reason this is important is because I am including as much information as I can on each one of these beaded beads. So here it's going to give you um, kind of a, uh, uh, an idea of what kind of beads you're going to need, what the Delica number is, how many you need of each of these Delica numbers to get this peyote strip. We have the version of the um, visual chart here that has the A's and B's that are referenced up here. So in this case, white is DB200, and that's the A bead. And you can see that all the white beads here are the a, also have the A reference. The black beads are DB10, they're the B bead, and they're referenced here. So if you are most comfortable working off of a chart like this, then that's one option for you. Here's the other option for you, this other kind of chart. It's the exact same thing. Oop, let me get it, make sure it's up on the screen. It's the exact same thing, but it's just a realistic type uh, rendering of it and where you're just going by the colors look as opposed to the A, B, C, D, whatever numbers. Then the other thing that I'm including here, which is also important, I love to follow a word chart meaning instead of trying to follow along on these, this graph, you're actually getting written instructions telling you how many of each bead to pick up on each row. Um, so you've got three different ways to follow this pattern on each one of these beaded beads. And I tell you up at the top, two color, even count. Here is an example of a three color even count same thing here, here's this little uh, spot that tells you which beads are gonna be used. You've got the two charts plus the word chart. And then, oop, that's my notes. And then here is an example of a three color odd count. So it's still gonna give you the same kind of information. You're just gonna have to know when you do that odd count that you're gonna have to do that funky turn. And I am going to demonstrate that funky turn for you in this video. Okay. So having said all of that stuff, let's start beading, okay? Because let's get to the beads. Now that I've talked your ear off <laughs> with all that information, my uh, director here was laughing at me. He's like, okay, so do you wanna do a new section? Because that was like 30 minutes of talking. I'm like, no, really? Yeah, I'm a girl who knows how to talk. Anyway, let's talk about, I'm gonna show you how to make your first even count peyote strip. Super easy to do. Okay, let's bring you in. This is the strip that we're gonna make. 
Um, so it's three colors. You could, I mean, it's the same technique whether you're using two colors, three colors, whatever. I put my three colors out on my pattern here. The colors that I put out correspond with the colors here in the diagram and then also the colors here in the word chart. There's my little legend telling me what's the A bead, what's the B bead, what's the C bead. I put those in order, so A, B, C. So I'm good there. Let's see how we actually get this started here. Let me get the right thread, okay. So I use about um, a generous wings, uh, not a wingspan, but an arm length of thread when I make one of these. So roughly three feet. You could probably skimp that a little bit, but uh, there's nothing sadder than running out of thread when you have like three rows left to do to get to your 48 rows. Ask me how I know. I know because I practically cried tears one night when I had to do that myself because I tried to cheat with too, too short of a thread. So, you know, three to three and a half feet. And then if you find that you end up with lots extra, then at that point you can start cutting back. But see, see how it runs for you. Okay, so I am going to start by following the word chart on this. Um, when you're following this word chart, just to help you with orientation, uh, because of the software that I'm using, I normally like to start the way you traditionally follow a diagram and start at the bottom right and go across and start that way and work your way up. However, this software works so that it actually starts here at the top right and goes across. So let me kind of show you as I'm following around along here. We're picking up for our first row, which is both rows one and two. One A, um, that's not right. Oh, I'm sorry, this is actually starting at the top left. One A, two C, which is, no, I was right the first time. Sorry, forgetting which one is my C. So one A, which is the black, two C, which is our teal and our teal, two B, which is our white and our white, and then 1A, which is our black. Then when we come around to the next row, you're picking up 1B, which is that white, 1C, which is that teal, and 1A, which is that black. So then that's where you're going back and forth and back and forth. So just to give you some orientation on how this relates to this and this, okay? So I'm gonna start with that word chart. So I'm picking up 1A. I'm actually gonna put on my new fancy cheater glasses, my craft optics that are making my life so much easier. When I finished filming the first uh, video where I used the new craft optics, um, I cheered. And they kind of laughed at me here at the studio, but I was like, oh my God, I can see, I can see the beads while I'm working on this. Okay, 2B and 1A. So that's for our first row. I'm bringing it down. I want to leave enough thread to weave back in later. So about four to six inches there. Now, because this is only six beads wide, I'm not using a stopper bead because I can hold that pretty easily in my hand like that. But if you want to, there's certainly no reason why you can't put a stopper bead on the end there. So here I am now on the next row. So I'm picking up one B. And it's going to sit on top of that first bead. I'm going to pass through the next. Then I've got a C, which is the teal. And so I'm skipping one for it to sit on top of, passing through the next. And then the last bead of this row is going to be an A. So I'm picking up an A, which is the black skipping one for it to sit on top of and passing through the next bead. All right. There we go. And you can already see that stripe pattern, right? So here's three in a row, here's three in a row. You've got the two here and then it's match over there. So now I am on row four. I am picking up one B, passing through the sticky outy. I'm picking up 1A, which is the black, passing through the next sticky outy. Oops, that first one wasn't sitting right. Let me tighten it. There we go. And 
then I'm picking up one C and passing through the sticky outy. So you can see how those diagonal rows are now continuing. Flip it, and then I'll do the next row. So here I'm picking up. So see how now we're to the point where we're only picking up three beads per row, which is awesome. And what? So super easy. And then you're just going to follow your pattern until you get to the 48 rows. So your next question is going to be, how do I know what's 48 rows? I mean, if I'm, you know, check marking every one of these off, then you know, but there's two ways to do this. One is you can count the beads in your peyote strip. And the easiest way to count your beads in the peyote strip is either to count the first two columns here, assuming, okay, we'll call them a column because I'll, I'll hold it this way. The first two columns here are worth of beads, or I think on a strip like this, especially where there's a pattern, it might be a little bit easier. You can actually do the two outside columns. So count the number of beads down this side, count the number of beads down this side. That's how many rows you have. However, you know what else you can do? And I, this is the way I do it, is I fit it around a carrier bead. So I just put that around the end. I look to see if at the end here, if those beads match up in the zigzag, if it fits, if I zigzag back and forth, is it fitting perfectly over the carrier bead? If the answer is yes, that was your 48. So that's how I do that. Um, that's how you're going to make the, the even count peyote strips. So see how easy that is? Super easy. When we come back, I'm going to show you how you do the odd count peyote strip because it's a little bit trickier with that funky odd count turn. Let's talk about those funky odd count peyote strips. Honestly, I love them because like I said, having a center point allows you to do so much more with symmetrical designs. Uh, when I was designing the strips for the even count, you know, there were a number of times where I wanted to center something and I couldn't do it with just an even count. So having the odd count allows a lot more of those uh, geometric kind of shapes. So it's really pretty cool. Definitely worth figuring out how to do that funky odd count turn to do it. And I've got two ways for you to do that odd count turn and I'm going to show them to you both. Let's get started on an odd count uh, bead here. Um, I'm using the same colors here with the exception of, you can see here in the shiny section, I'm going to use this bright yellow instead because A, it's part of that kit. I think it's going to look really cool. Uh, secondly, because I just think it's going to be easier for you to see what's going on here. While I have this sample out though, um, I wanted to point out one of the things that's really fun to do when you're picking your Delica colors for these beads is to mix finishes because this is a pretty muted palette right here but because one of them is a shiny metallic finish and the other two are uh, they're both part of the glazed finishes that um, Miyuki came out with in the Delicas in 2017, th it really pops because you've got that metallic band going through there. It's subtle but cool. So I think mixing finishes is a lot of sophistication in one of these uh, color combos. So just as an FYI, I also think color pops are an awful lot of fun to do too. Okay, so let me get started on this odd count. So starting it is going to be exactly the same as what you're used to. So here I am picking up one C. I'm following along on my word count or my word chart. One C, two Bs, uh, one A, two Bs, and one C. Okay. And I'm going to bring those down, leaving a tail, enough to weave in later. And I'll just kind of hold on to those. And then my next row is going to be B to A and B. So B, skipping one for it to sit next to, passing through the next one, to A, so an A, 
Hello, I do need you to sit properly. There we go. An A, skip in one for it to ne sit next to, passing through the next bead. And the second A, skip in one, passing through the next bead. And then the B. And this is where we've got ourselves our first odd count problem because I want to add a bead. It's going to sit on top of this bead here, but there's no bead for it to pass through. So what do we do? Well, your first turnaround is going to be a little bit different than your remainder of your turnarounds. So this first turnaround, we're picking up that, that bead that's going to sit there. We're going to pass in the opposite direction through the bead it's going to sit on top of. So it's the loose one on your tail. Kind of kind of pop that into place, kind of hold it. Then what I'm going to do is we're going to pass down through two more beads on a diagonal here. So first is going to be the single bead right there and then through the first of the double, you can and by the double I mean the two beads stacked on top of each other right there. Okay, now we're going to use that spot where there's the double to turn around and go in the opposite direction. So now we're going to go back towards that tail. The thread is going to sit right along that intersection there. We're going to pass through the single. We're going to pass through the one that the tail is coming out of. And now we can finally flip this and pass through the bead that we added with all of that trouble there on the end so that we can start the next row. That first turnaround is the most troublesome one that you're going to have. After this it gets easier, I promise. Okay, so let's do our next row here. So this is going to be 1A, 1C, and 1A. So 1A. Pass through the sticky outie. One C for that middle. And one A. Pass through the last sticky outie on that row. So on this turn, there's nothing funky that you have to deal with. So we're just going to turn it. Then on the next row, when we turn after we finish this row, we'll have that funky turn again. So this time we've got an A, two C's, and an A. So we've got A, two C's, one and two. Okay, so now here we are with this A that we need to add here. And again, how do we attach it? Well, first turnaround I'm going to show you is going to be the traditional turnaround. And then I'll show you the cheater. So I picked up that bead. Again, we're going to go backwards towards yourself through the bead that it's going to sit on top of. And then you're also going to catch the next one on the diagonal. Now you might have to do this in two passes. You might get lucky and be able to do one. As I've mentioned before, these glazed beads have a little bit of tooth on them and it's harder to kind of get your bead through multiple delicas with the glazed ones. So I'm just going to actually just do it this one at a time. So I went towards myself through the one that it's going to sit on top of, then add a diagonal the next one, and that one is going to be the one closest to your tail. We're going to now turn around by putting our thread across that little intersection right there, we're going to go back in the opposite direction this now. And this time I can get through my bead, my needle through two beads. So it's the one right next to the one that we're coming out of, plus the one below the bead that we just added. So we just created a little bit of a figure X. And now we can pass through the bead that we just added. And flip like so, so we can now go in this next direction. 
Now I'm going to go do the next two rows here and we're going to do the cheater turn the next time I get back here. So this time we have got, let's see, what row am I on? So if you do, if you're following the word chart and you get confused about what row you're on, remember that you can count the outside two um, columns of Delica's here and that'll tell you which, how many rows you have. So one, two, three, four, five, that means I'm about to add row six. So here I've got a C, a B, and a C. So C, B, hey you, you're not ready to play yet, and a C. So that was our normal side. We'll flip it, so this will be row seven, and it's a C, two Bs, and a C. So C, two Bs. Hey, somehow, oh yeah, no, we're fine. Two Cs, one, two, and, oh no, because I picked up the wrong color. That's why it was looking wrong to me, C. This keeping track of your A, B's, and C's. So what was this supposed to be? So that was a C, two B, and a C. Oh. Okay, so don't pay attention, attention to the pattern because I actually have messed the pattern up somehow in here with the, my A, Bs, and Cs because I've been busy talking. So I'm just going to concentrate on getting across here to show you the turn. So we're just going to make up our own pattern here. What the heck? <laughs> That's what happens when you try to walk and talk and bead all at the same time. Okay, so we're just going to pretend that yellow is what should be on the outside there. So here's the cheater um, odd count turn because I've got a bead that I need to sit right here and no place to attach it. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass under the threads that are, that are on the outside edge of the intersection below there. So you're just catching the threads. It's going to allow you to turn around and this is where I flip it because it's easier for me to get my needle up through here passed under those threads and now through the bead that you just added in the opposite direction. See how easy that was? Now the only downside of doing this is it does add a little bit of extra thread there right on that outside edge. You are most likely never going to see it. If you're a perfectionist, it might drive you crazy. Um, it also is going to depend a little bit on what color thread you're using, how, how visible it is and that kind of thing. But that is the cheater turn. And obviously the cheater turn is way easier than the traditional figure X turn. I will actually admit that I tend to still use the figure X turn. Um, I don't know, just maybe it's the traditionalist in me. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just proud that I can remember how to do it after all these years because for a long time I had to look it up every time and I finally got it in this head. You guys have a video that to watch. You've got no excuses. So that is how to do odd count turn two different ways. Um, be a little mix, bit more successful about actually following the pattern. It works a lot better that way. And when we come back I'm going to show you how we're going to actually attach your peyote strip to the carrier bead itself. You've got a bunch of options. Okay, so you've got this peyote strip and you got this carrier bead. And now you wanna put the two of them together and how do you do it? Well, there's a bunch of different ways. And some people are more purist uh, and do not, like I like to use glue. Um, I've used all sorts of different types and formats and I'm gonna kinda of talk you through all of them. I keep going back to a specific glue technique and I'll show you which one is my favorite. Uh, I've also used uh, double stick tape as another option. I've used several different kinds of that. Still keep going back to the one glue option, but there are certain people out there who feel like it's an absolute abomination to put glue on your beadwork. I get it. There's certain things I'm kind of weird about too with beadwork. Uh, 
however, to me, the glue was the easiest and the most secure. So that's why I personally went with that. But that's also why I want to show you a whole broad range of options because if glue's not for you, one of these other methods might be better. The very first method that people will use is just plain old tension. So when you're zipping the uh, peyote strip up on the carrier bead, some people have really tight tension. And so the fit of that peyote strip around that carrier bead is so tight that the carrier bead will not slip out. I am not one of those people. I know, I'm a loose lady. I've mentioned it before. Uh, I have to work really hard on keeping a tight tension. So for me, when I tried to do the tension method, it just didn't work at all. I'm going to bring you in a little closer and show you exactly what I'm talking about. This is one of the only beads that I have not come actually attached with one of these other glue or uh, um, glue or or double stick tape methods. Um, this, but see, look how this slides out way too easy. So there's no way that my tension will hold this strip on the carrier bead. Just never gonna happen. So here's what I, I have tried all of these different methods, including one, man, I thought I brought everything under the sun today and there's one thing that I did not bring, but I'll talk about it. So the first thing that I tried was glue dots and double stick tape. So the double stick tape was the thing that I forgot to bring today. And the double stick tape worked really well. So I got it in um, the office supply uh, area. You can also sometimes find it in um, the craft, I'm sorry, the, um, what am I trying to say? The um, scrapbook, scrapbook area in a big box store, um, which is where I got these glue dot kind of things and, and stickers. Um, so double stick tape worked well. The downside of the double stick tape was that the width of it was too wide for to just put a strip on the carrier bead. I actually had to cut the double stick tape in half to fit a strip down the center here. It wasn't a huge deal. It was just a small pain in the butt and the double stick tape worked really nicely. So I actually thought that that was going to be my favorite method. Um, then I tried using these glue dots and I bought a variety again at a big box store. Uh, there's the, there, they come in permanent glue dots and uh, removable or repositional glue, repositionable glue dots. You don't want to use the repositionable ones because we want our, our carrier, or I'm sorry, our peyote strip to, to uh, adhere firmly to the carrier bead. So there are a couple of different sizes actually. So this is the, I put, I could just kind of cut this off the box so I could show you. This is the actual size of this glue dot. And it's the 3 eighths inch or 10 millimeter. Um, this fits on here, but it if you look here, let me kind of put this over the actual size glue dot there. It's a little bit wider than the carrier bead itself. So there is a little bit of overlap on the outside. So then you kind of have to smush that in a little bit so that it doesn't show on the outside. So this was, this was just a little bit too big. So then here's the mini glue dots. And there's the actual size there. This worked much better. Um, the only reason I didn't love, I, cause again, I thought this was going to be a really good option. I went to glue last. So in my defense, I did try glue last. Uh, I thought that this was going to be a really good option, but what ended up happening is I just kept fumbling with these little glue dots. And even though this, this is a, uh, a, a attachment thing here. I'm going to actually put this on a different one. You're supposed to be able to just roll this and get it on there. But see what happened? Because we're dealing with such, with such a small area, it never seemed to get in the right place. And so then I'm pulling it off or trying to pull it off. And then I'm trying to put it on the right spot. And then it gets all over my fingers. And it just, it never seemed to like be a really easy method for me. So I kind of decided that was not working. So let's put those off to the side. So then this was my next option, and this was a Scotch brand one, and these are squares, adhesive squares. And so let me do this. So you can see that it's actually, I'm sorry, it's actually more like a rectangle. And this was not too bad of an option. 
Um, I know I, that Kelly Dale used this in her video, I believe. Um, so again, you can see that getting it on straight is a bit of an issue. Again, it's a little bit wider than the carrier bead itself. It probably would fit better if you're using, let me kind of pull this off, if you're using one of the Chinese ones, which seem to be a little bit wider. Yeah, so it does fit widthwise on the Chinese ones, so just as an FYI. So that might be an option for those of you using the Chinese. The Czech ones are just a little bit not as wide. Okay, so again, it was an option. I still just didn't love it. Then I went to my glues. Man, you got to have an arsenal when you're testing all this stuff for you. So <laughs> you just wouldn't even believe what my office looks like right now as I was pulling all of these things. So the first thing that I used was E6000. This is my, I love this glue, so I use it for a lot of things. And the E6000 worked great. And the best way to apply the E6000, let's see here, let's kind of faux, well, I'll show you how I was attaching it or putting glue on the carrier bead here. The downside of E6000 is it's very smelly. So you want to get that cap on and off as quickly as possible. Because I'm using such a, working with such a small space here, working with a toothpick worked really well for me as opposed to using my finger, which is the method I normally would use, but toothpick, and then you just get that cap right back on because man, it's smelly. Um, so this works really well. So if this is what you have, go for it. I was quite pleased with this. Um, so that's my number two glue choice. My number three glue choice was the GS Hypo Cement. This has that nice pinpoint applicator. And so I was able to get glue right where I wanted it. The only reason I put this in the number three spot is because getting the, um, you're, you're already fumbling with the strip and with the glue and the carrier bead and then trying to put the cap back on this was one more thing to kind of fumble with. So it was a little bit awkward. So let me show you my winner. My number one method of attaching all these things was my Loctite super glue. Uh, this is a super glue that I have used before in projects. This is my favorite delivery method of super glue because it does not come out the top until you have squeezed these sides, meaning that you've got more control over when it comes out of the, um, of the container. And so that's why this is my absolute favorite one. I do carry this, actually I carry all of these glues in my um, store online at jillwisemandesigns.com. I will pop a link uh, up in the little eye in the corner and also in the video description below. I'll have links to these various glues. But let me show you how I actually use this because there's a little bit of a learning method for these, the one thing about the glass, well, and it's true, I suppose, of the um, plastic too, they're slippery. So to get it all, to get the glue on it, to get the two ends completed around the edge, I had to play with it a little bit before I kind of got a technique. So let me show you my technique so you don't have to, to mess with it nearly as much. So here's my 48 rows. I know I'm, I'm ready to go. I put kind of fold this like my taco over the end here. And then what I do is I like to hold this right at the base. So right where the fold is, I hold that here at the bottom. And then I fold back this top edge. So I'm holding all of this together. The reason I'm doing it this way is because by holding it like this, I can make sure that that peyote strip is going to lay right even across the top of the carrier bead as I glue it down because my fingers are controlling the sides here. It's not letting it kind of slip off to the side. So I open my Loctite glue and then it doesn't come out until I press the green buttons here on the side and I just put a little bit up and down that strip and then I lay this back down. I did fumble a little bit and got a little bit of glue on my finger, but yeah. 
So then I roll it over to the other side. And I'm going to do the exact same thing, making sure that I keep it centered. A little bit of glue does not take much. Okay. Fold this back up. You have a little, you know, like 10, 15 seconds to readjust this if need be. So I'm making sure that the sides are all nice and even here. And then up here that my beads are all connecting the way I want them to. So here is where I'm going to zigzag back and forth across the top to attach this. So I'm coming out of the speed here. I'm going to come and hit all of my sticky outies as I zigzag back and forth. So here's my first sticky outie on this side. And sticky outie on this side. And then I'm catching the sticky outie right here. And then over here. Here. And then the last thing that I need to do is these two beads right here are not attached on this outside edge. So I'm going to grab this one. And then to end this thread off, I'm going to make sure that I now turn around and go catch this other one so that now I'm connecting these two beads together. And then to end off the thread, I'm just going to do a typical peyote ending where I'm going to uh, change my direction two or three times, like so. So I went up two, let's go up three, I'll just go one more. This is where it's really hard to get more than one delica at a time as you're going through and attaching this. Then I'm going to turn around, go in the opposite direction for a couple beads. We can get to that outside edge again. And now let's go a couple beads in this direction. So that'll be my third change of direction. One, two, and three. Now I can cut off that thread. And one brand new carrier bead is born. And that is now glued on. It is not going to come off. It's already dry. If you use the E6000, it takes uh, 24 hours to come to a complete dry. But of course, with the super glue, it's a super fast dry. That's why I kept reaching for the super glue, especially in this Loctite container, because it makes it the least messy. That's, I guess that's the way to put it. It's just the least messy. So, uh, and, and I could do it all with one hand. So I could hold the bead in one hand and do the glue in the other hand. And it was the fastest. So you might want to try with a couple different methods, see which you like best, because just because I like this one best doesn't mean you will, although probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so get your, your peyote strips on your carrier beads. When we come back, let's talk about what kind of jewelry we can make with them. All right, believe it or not, I have just a little bit more to say about carrier beads. And that is how to pull them all together in a project. Uh, you can do it as a bracelet, you can do it as a necklace. Obviously the ones that I'm showing you are just one of a million different ways you can put these things together. So use your imagination. Incorporate a pendant bead. Um, you know, I think that we are just touching at the very tip of what can be done with carrier beads. As a matter of fact, I've already just today, as I was on my way to the studio, uh, saw some new uses of the carrier beads where they're not necessarily using the peyote strip or they're using a peyote strip in a different manner. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of new interesting designs over the next six months to a year using these carrier beads. So use your imagination and I want to see what you're working on. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you exactly how to make these pieces that I put together here. So let's take a closer look. So on the necklace, um, this is just a basic stringing thing, and I did not use Fireline 
wildfire, any stringy, I'm sorry, any bead weaving uh, thread type thing, I actually went and used beading wire. So I used soft flex beading wire to string these. It's just stronger uh, and it will not um, stretch out. So that's why I use the soft flex. That means you're gonna need to use crimps here up at the top to attach it all together. I do want to tell you that when you are getting the spacing, okay, there's a couple things to tell you about spacing. One is you, I used the four millimeter beads along the top hole of these carrier beads and then six millimeter beads along the bottom edge of the hole. That's what creates this nice, this nice curve. However, you don't want to pull this super tight because if you do uh, get really crazy on pulling with tension, which I've seen some people do, this curve gets to such an extent that it will not curve along your neck. So, you know, you, you don't want a lot of the, the beading wire to show, but if just a tiny bit shows, it's not that big of a deal. The more important thing is to get the nice curve that you're looking for. If you find it troublesome to get that nice curve using the four millimeters on top. What you can do is maybe put in um, a delica on either side to to widen it out a little bit, or you know you you can play with what kind of bead you put in here. Basically, if you are finding it too tight like this, that means you need to put a slightly wider bead in between each spot on the top, or maybe only on every other one. You know, so you'll have to play with the spacing a little bit if you find yourself having it be really too tight like that. The other thing to know about spacing is getting these strands so that they fall nicely along the back of your neck. It's a little bit of a um, trial and error kind of thing. Uh, I would say it took me a good 30 minutes Eh, maybe not quite that long, maybe 20 minutes to kind of get the the numbers right so that it laid centered uh, perfectly and to make sure that I had the length where I wanted it. So do this when you have some patience because you don't want to get super frustrated. Um, I put a delica in between each one of the beads here and I just think that that gives it kind of that knotted uh, appearance. So I think that's really pretty instead of just stringing straight um, round druck beads or pearls or whatever you're going to string back here. Your other option instead of doing the two strands is you can actually bring the two strands together to a single strand. So you'd start at each hole of the last carrier bead and then within one or two beads bring it to a single line and just do a single line at the back. And that will allevi alleviate some of the making sure that these strands lay properly next to each other. So that's another option for you. On the crimping here, um, I'm going to refer you to, uh, there's two videos that you can look at. I have a basic stringing video. Um, I will pop a link up in that eye up in the corner for that video. I'll also put it in the video description below. So that's the, my basic stringing that shows you basic crimping techniques. Then I also, this particular crimping, I've, I've gone completely to the Om Tara crimper now. That's my favorite crimper to use. And I've also done a whole separate video on just using that crimper. Same thing, I'll pop that link up in the eye and I will pop it down in the video description below. So that's how we work the necklace. Now let's talk about the bracelet. I already talked a little bit about this. I put this particular one on Stretch Magic. Uh, one thing to know about Stretch Magic, it is one of the most reliable stretchy materials. Let me kind of bring this into frame here. So this is the clear that I'm using. I'm using the point, uh, 0.07 millimeter clear, and it is a reliable stretchy material. Now, no stretchy material is going to last forever. It just, it's over time, it breaks down a couple years, it's going to sag or break. And so just, just know that the Stretch Magic is not going to be a permanent solution. You're going to get a lot of wear out of it, but at some point you're going to have to restring it on new Stretch Magic. So just, just so you know. Then your other option would be, of course, to do the same thing here where you're using the clasp and do beading wire instead of using your stretch magic. So you would, use, you would refer back to those same videos to 
um, attach a clasp in your bracelet if you choose to go the clasp route. If you choose to go the stretch magic route, I wanted to show you how to tie the best knot. Uh, the best way to do a knot here that is not going to come undone on you is to do what's called a surgeon's knot. So here I, I've, I've experimented, I've done this two ways, two different ways. One where you ran the stretch magic through both the top and the bottom with their spacers and tied the knots one at a time that way. Uh, I've also done it where I've just strung the top set first, tied that knot, and then came back and, and added this, the bottom section and tied that knot separately. It's kind of six of one, half a dozen of another. Whichever you're most comfortable with, go for it. So I'm just going to do it right here where I've just done the top section because I think you can see it a little bit better. So the thing to remember is the rule for tying a square knot is that you want to take your right, the, the cord in your right hand, put it over your left first, and then under. So right over left is your first, first piece, and bring that nice and tight there. And then you want to reverse that. So on your second half of your square knot, it's left over right and through. If you do it the same way both times, it is not going to be secure and it is going to come apart really fast, okay? So first thing is I want to make sure that bottom knot's tight because it's, this is the, the downside of the stretch magic is it's really uh, slippery. So you might even, if you have a, another person, you can have them kind of hold that first knot while you bring the second knot in. But because we're going to tie yet another knot, you're going to have another option. So I just kind of, as I tie any knot, I like to do it nice and slow, make sure that it's coming right, closing down right where I want it to go close down, and I pull those nice and tight. So that is a square, oops, see, I may have accidentally, when I was, this was flipping around, I may have gotten my right over left and left over right undone. But here's the thing. If you've done it properly, it will not come undone. So that just tells me I didn't do it properly. But we're going to do what's called a surgeon's knot as one more security layer. And the surgeon's knot is the same thing that you did before. So right over left and through. But with a surgeon's knot, you're just going to go and take that same piece that you went through and go through again. So it's just got two passes through the loop and then tighten on down. And again, don't be afraid to kind of pull and tug, tighten that knot down. A, you're tightening the knot, and B, you're also testing it to make sure it's not going to come undone on you. Then I'm going to kind of pull it from underneath, make sure it doesn't loosen up, get undone, and now it's nice and secure. So that surgeon's knot makes all the difference. Um, so do the square knot first, add a surgeon's knot on top, and then if you want to, if you're feeling like you just want that added security, you can put a little dab of glue there. You can use E6000 or you can use your um, super glue, whatever. And then you're just going to cut these off nice and close to the knot. Like so. And there is Barbie's fabulous bangle bracelet. Hey, what a cute ring, huh? Once I get that bottom done. <laughs> so in this case, uh, sometimes you have a bead with a hole big enough that that knot can go inside. In this case, the uh, glass, check glass carrier beads, that hole is too small. It will not go inside, so it will stay outside of the beads. But there you go. Super easy to do a stretch magic bracelet. Just remember it's not going to last forever. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I can't wait to see your colorways. I can't see, wait to see your combinations. I can't wait to see what different ways you put them together and necklaces and bracelets and things. Um, I really want you to share and, and bead along with us. Remember, there's 20,000 of us at least out on Facebook in five different groups all of whom may be participating in this. So, so come check out all the eye candy, come participate in our bead along. Um, and remember that in the Jill Wiseman Designs beaters group, 
I want to see your stuff long after March goes on. Uh, this is a new kind of fun frontier playing with these carrier beads. And I can't wait to see where we can all take it. I hope you enjoy this as much as I do. I'm going to be wearing a lot of this kind of jewelry coming up because I love making these little carrier beads. Happy beading.